sometimes in life you just come across a person who really just does it all. That's and uh, I don't know any other way to describe JCO other than <laughs> hey. man of many talents, including Very. including uh, pizza. Oh my, oh God. my People forget God. about the pizza. I forgot sucks. about the pizza. We can't <laughs> fucking eat it anymore, but we yeah. want to. Yeah, I heard that shit on the last pod. What are you guys talking about? We can't uh, have it anymore, dude. Let, let me tell you. First off, let's just say welcome to the podcast, Mr. JCO. Thank Yay. you. Thanks for having me, it's guys. Been, we've been trying to get him on for so long. And Thanks for clapping, Jake. Some kind of schedule. Mine was more like an initial head nod. Thanks I don't think it's for, worth being thanks called out on up top. I mean, this is a new year. I'm not going to get mad at things, but like, you know, I think that he felt my head nod. I don't think it yeah. was. Uh, we're you know. we're both Jewish, so we have like a little. Okay. We don't have to say it. Looking oh. back, this is uh, <laughs> just you know to get this out of the way before yeah. we continue with the podcast. Yeah. Do you think that you felt my appreciation of like having you here? Yeah. Or do you think? Okay, you did. Yes. So looking back, would you have stopped the podcast to be like, "Hey, why don't you clap?" <laughs> nah, I would have. I would have let the <laughs> Blake's. I would have let Blake's energy of being nice and congratulatory roll on without cutting it off see personally that's and that's <laughs> I mean, and, and honestly that's the right answer and <laughs> especially because it was about me yeah. if it was about someone else i'm like yeah what, whatever on. and yeah. as but, a big uh, as a big energy guy um yeah. you know i you're a big energy i know guy. that Ooh. this is where that podcast wanted to be as far yeah. as energy wise you are a big energy guy he's yeah. a big yeah. energy guy but like <laughs> the type of energy that everyone hates <laughs> <laughs> hey that um could be valid, but I, you know, new year, new me. New year, new me. We're you ever heard of necessary evil? Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Not sure. that he's evil. Well, G- yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, <laughs> different, a different shade attack of that. on Jews. Yeah. And himself. <laughs> My goodness, great. Well, I'm gonna have to go home and crystal after this. That's smart. That's, Wait, that sounded like you're talking about smoking meth. I'm gonna have to go home and crystal it up. <laughs> yeah, dude. I got some of that Walter White blue stuff. <laughs> uh, Walter White. It's just White. when you sit Walter. on the couch and hold a crystal. Yeah, and then smoke it. And then what happens? <laughs> you just feel that energy and you um, kind of just become one with the moment. It aligns your chakras. Okay. All right, what kind of crystal? Are we talking quartzite? What are we talking here? We, are we got some real shit? No, no, those are watching. I don't know, but yo, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, can we <laughs> get back to See, I'm this not what sure happened. what you're talking about. <laughs> this is what happened. I tried to bring in a nice intro and then Jake halted the, the, the entire energy. Well, I don't know if I, if energy. I started no. the halt. I... Can I okay? But, here's I, but I, have here's, I have a question. I have a question for you. Water guys, off so. the back, baby, is rolling off. I have a question. So the theme song that before the show starts. Hey, why didn't we hear it? I, I just wanted to hear it. <laughs> uh, it, it gets I have, edited. but but my question is, which one of you was it, and why was it a hundred percent Jake Adams? Well, <laughs> wait, funny wait, so you hear this. I think that you should hear all of us sing it and then decide actually who. who I'm, I'm down. But I just picture like Jake sliding in like Tom Cruise <laughs> in his underwear and socks in his living room sitting under a brush. I wanted to make it something that f- old people who played golf would be uncomfortable listening to. I don't know. I feel like that's the demo for that. For that song, yeah, that, that really hits the nail. On the yeah, for that. so funny. Hmm. <laughs> um, I, I know, agree. I know, I, agree. I knew that. He, okay, so when I when I hit up JCO to be on this podcast, he's like, "I know you guys like offering. I've brought you an audio offering. Oh. <gasps> I have an auditory, oh, I, auditory. Audio? I have an Audrey. auditory offering. An for AO. The Whoa, this is our first AO. This yes, is, yeah, dude. I'm a I'm a big offering guy, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a big uh, uh, energy offering crystal guy. This is a good. I, so basically, so, yeah. As much as I love the, you know, the theme song, after our, you know, Blake hit me, he was like, "Yo, come be on the pod." I was, I woke up and got extremely baked, and I was like, "Wait, I should flip this." He flipped it. So I fucking oh, remixed oh, the theme song. Yeah! I'm so excited. He would not. There's, I haven't told these guys anything oh, yet. No. Like I didn't want. I want the first here. Oh, on the pod. Oh, I'm so pumped for this. When you said so, auditory offering, I knew. I knew he's like. I oh, mean, he probably made the theme song dope, but yeah. I have no idea. I mean, I do. I've been waiting. <laughs> I do produce music for. Living, so. <laughs> I've been waiting for someone. Can we to play it? That. Yeah. So uh, headphones on. Let's give this uh, a first spin oh, here. I got goosebumps already. You guys ready? Yep. Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. Already like it more. Yeah. Ah oh, shit. Oh, you heard that? Oh, damn. <laughs> See, I... <laughs> this is what we gotta go with. We have to go with it. Hold the up. ball and Keep the cup. Listen, listen, listen. Woo! Come fucking K! 
catch these hands, <laughs> yep. bro. <laughs> Dude, this dude. it's done. Holy it's shit. done. That's our new song. I didn't remember having a podcast before this song. <laughs> oh, we my have God. to go with that. That's it. Yeah. So you got you guys like it. Say less. That's fucking it. That's it, dude. We have to go with Everybody that. listening to this episode right now <laughs> understands <laughs> that we have a new theme song. As well, soon as I made that, I was like, they're probably gonna want to use this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can charge us fee. Yeah, no. it's gonna be fifty grand, but yeah, I got you. Uh, we're all about this year. <laughs> Just invoice edge. We're all about this year <laughs> stepping up our podcast, and I've been complaining about this song for years now yeah and nobody's ever liked it yeah for the record it, nobody's yeah, ever liked yeah. it. no that's true it, it was it was always like half cringe half i was like this is kind of catchy <laughs> yeah know? it's catchy i'll give you that but that that comes in like oh that's hot dude like we're i feel like we're so tripping right on now. mushrooms um so that's actually not people always think it's my voice and i've never said it wasn't yeah, i thought it was not. just funny to keep that going <laughs> dude but recorded in his closet i didn't know that was like a known thing i was just like yeah, I know it's your vocal tones. I'm no, like, it's my buddy Joey Dardano, uh, who you check guys, out this man's TikTok. He's related? very funny. Uh, no, no, his no. dad's Tell wild. Me. Dardano's dad? You I checked Dardano's out his dad? dad's page. What? <laughs> when? Yeah. Why? So he took a picture with his dad, and he looks like a super fun dude. And I clicked on it. He's like a huge plastic surgeon, and his page is just wild. like this dude's wild. He looks fun. Really? This dude looks like a good fucking time. Does he like, do noses or? I think he does all of it. Ooh. Oh, Check out his dad's page, man. His dad's page is lit. Okay. All right. So yeah. Joey Dardano's dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, dude. Like he's he's like a wild, fun, looks like a party plastic surgeon. Like one of those guys. Like, but I'm going to oh. send this song to Dardano because he's going to be stoked that now he's going to, you know. He's yeah. an artist. Dude. Now, now he's like in the game. Yeah. Dude, throw, the, throw that's that, that a bitch on. collab for Joey. Throw honestly. that shit on Spotify. Bro, <laughs> yeah. it, it's actually, sick. I love the use of the ball going in the hole. Yeah. yeah. The, that, people that. do not, it's so tough for people to use that sound effect well. Like you will do it in like transitions just alone. And it's like, yeah. but I yeah, use it you, as like a percussive, like yeah, it's drum kinda, fill. It's, it's almost yeah. like yeah. a, like a, yeah. like a snare. You fucking yeah. nailed that. Well, the, the snare is I put in golf swings. I don't know if you picked that up, but half the snares have like a full, like, that wow! Money, See, this just needs to be. I it, mean, we're, what do we we're, need to do to get this in every? Thank single? you for this offering. His, yeah, you know, all hey this, man, this it's is, a lovely offer. I made it for you guys because yeah. I love you guys. See, wait, I, this is so and, amazing. So, it's like art being added to art to make even better art. Yeah, Woo! yeah. Whoa. And as an artist, um, you know, <laughs> I I appreciate that statement. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's it's just like I feel like we leveled up, and for you to just come out of nowhere with that. It's just beautiful, and I yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, dude. that is greatly my pleasure. That is greatly appreciated, and it's just like you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to be. You didn't have to wake up and be fucking great today, but you did. <laughs> I had a stomach ache earlier, and now it's gone. Wow. So yeah, That's music huge. is medicinal. You know, music's very medicinal. Music is my boyfriend. Music is my favorite place. Music is my hot, so, hot sex. You know that one. I don't know that one. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no, know. I don't know. It. I know that one. I guess I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, How long have you guys known each other, Stotts and JCL? We actually met random as fuck at, uh, I forget, I think it might have been Hard Summer. Oh, uh, yeah. Corona Beach. A bunch of our homies were doing a big back to back and yep. we both got asked to play. Yep. And we are both like DJ, and I was like, "Wait, you're black." He's like, "You're Jake." Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had this like, we actually have a funny ass picture where we're both pretty sauce looking, lit. sauce looking. Dude, maybe you want to edit in on the clip. Later, <laughs> we it's, could, we're like, yeah. it's, I think I have it somewhere in my phone. Yeah, it was it was 2018 hard summer, I think. Yeah, where's hard summer? Uh, here. It's oh, in okay. like San Bernardino. Yeah, I got yeah. a fucking good minor infraction there. I I remember I actually <laughs> for what, dude? Yeah, for <laughs> being <reading>? an idiot. They're <laughs> 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 like, God damn, someone excuse, ate all the chicken tenders. Excuse me, sir. We we've run out of funnel cakes. Oh uh, yeah. Uh no, I think we should tell everybody about JCO. Well, just what he does. Are you I gonna mean, get into that? No, I mean I think we should hear about what the minor infraction was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was drinking a beer like right outside of the um, the gate. It has to be alcohol only inside, and it was uh, like a foot outside. And they're like, "You're outside." And of you the were just heart. standing in front of a security, like standing, a, so you standing right snitched? out front. And there was a cop on a horse. It was like you can't have that here. It has to be inside, dude. So, you got to fucking tuck it, bro. I know. Dude, you, the cops come and you tuck it. Did you just say, "Okay, I'm so sorry, I didn't know that," and then that was the end? I of did, the situation. and they said, "We understand, but we have to give you an infraction and write you up." 
Did you, what'd you, what happened? I was just like, I, you know, I was trying to be polite so that maybe they were going to like, all right, we'll let this give you a warning. But uh, the lady on the horse did not give me a warning. What, what, Damn. They had a horse cop? Yeah, they had several horse cops. And she came up out of nowhere behind me and was like, you can't have that here. It has to be inside there. I was like, oh, okay. I'll just go inside. And she's like, no, that's illegal. I have to give you an infraction. Wait, so what happened with the infraction? Yeah, I was going to say a fine or something? Yeah. I had to pay a fine, and it does go in your legal record, but it's been wiped. It's been t off now, but it did go in my legal record, and I'm like, this is so dumb. If, have yeah. you guys ever been, not a cool been arrested for underage drinking? Tell me, tell me something good about that. No, have you? No. Uh, you just started. Always just kind of flood the scene. Flood the scene. <laughs> no, you just waited until you're yeah. 21. He was drinking clam juice. Manischewitz only until no. 21. Honestly, my hardest years were in high school. I kind of got it out yeah. on my system. You know, yeah. what then, was what was like hard high school Jake like? Oh, like, dude, what were you, you doing on the Cape? Dude. I mean, just like drinking all the time and throwing parties at my parents' house. Uh, uh, oh, that what was nice. you were that kid? Yeah, always would have the the function. Wow. Oh, you were the party guy. Yeah. You threw them. Okay, but they're Damn. like in my mom's like tiny apartment. She would just did work. Wait, did you find that helped you with girls a lot? Being the guy throwing the party. That was my only play. Yeah, you'd be like, hey, <laughs> our room's only... right up there. Yeah. Wow. Well, I didn't do it. Like, I don't think I was like a creep about it, but you know, I thought that I just, you know, if they were in my general vicinity, yeah. it'd be an easier. Yeah. You definitely seem like a big, very cordial, tactical, cordial with chicks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is okay if I hold. How your do you do? <laughs> Damn hard, Jake, dude. It's my mom. I would smoke black and milds in my like Pinto, dude. My, my Pontiac. Oh. Black and milds. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Wow. Did you wear a do rag? <laughs> <laughs> on the cape, dude. Just, oh, just a Jewish know, right. kid he on the cape. He thought he was so the, With the back out, just flapping. Ugh. He thought he was so hard. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's I like, mean, dude, you guys don't know about cape winners, you know? Like, you, I don't know. Like, what don't. Cape, cape Cod? Cape yeah, Cod. Cape yes. Cod. Oh, dude, yes, I had cod. some times there. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hard, right? Yeah, pretty fucking rough, dude. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of pilgrims running around trying <laughs> to jack you. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of pilgrims over there trying to have uh, religious freedom. Yeah. A bunch of wild turkeys and shit. Mm hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Hell Which of, is the hell same. of a lobster roll, though. Uh, probably oh, yeah. the best in the mm -hmm. nation, and they're cheap. It's crazy. Ah, they're no. a lot cheaper. I mean, nah. like Maine. Blind I think. I think Maine's the kind of the goat for the lobster roll. Maine, but they have so. to be right. Oh, clam chowder on the Cape. I mean, come on. What are All you doing? Potato yeah, chips, dude. Who's yeah. beating? Does anyone beat in your clam chowder? No. Boston. It's not even the same. Boston. Well, Boston's the. It's like pretty. It's the same thing. Yeah. Well. Well, I don't a couple know. hour drive. I don't Any, like Massachusetts clam chowder, but like you know, Cape Cod clam chowder. That's kind of like. Yeah, you're not gonna beat that. Yeah. Just a lot it's of New salt. England clam chowder. New they England. don't say it's okay. not. It's a region. Yeah. Well, I, you England. know, I'm not from there, so I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, it's not the Boston Patriots. Yeah, which is wild. Should be. It is weird how some states like they're they're like the Arizona Cardinals, but then like the Denver Broncos. Right. Right. Just it's claiming a city, the Los Angeles the Lakers. City or like some some of the states. Golden State Warriors Golden or Los Angeles. And New Lakers. England is like a whole region is cr is claiming this team. Yeah, a whole region. Like what well, the fuck? that's because it's like known for Massachusetts, but it's technically in Rhode Island, the stadium. So I feel like they had to include. Okay. They can't just be like the Rhode Island Patriots. They could have. You know? But they, that, but that they are the. Cool. They got the Phoenix Suns. Ex yeah. Not the Phoenix. Uh, well, and they used to the be the guys. the <laughs> Phoenix Coyotes. And then they switched to the Arizona Coyotes. We got it. We can't be leaving out, you know, Tucson and Sedona. Yeah, yeah you can leave them out. You can leave. Them. You can probably leave them out. You can probably you can leave them out. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. I don't know. That's weird, man. I'm I'm high, so I don't know. So yeah, you guys met 2018. Yeah, we met in 2018. Yeah. DJing. We should probably say that. Or I don't think yeah, it's I think it's apparent by the song that yeah. was just made. But I don't know. This is a golf pod, you know. Like yeah. They don't necessarily know. Dude, it's yeah. funny. I have a video from that from that set where I went to the front of the stage and chugged two Coronas. Nice. Like on the drop, and like the, it was like the crowd the crowd went crazy. You just went bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, I went like. Wah. Actually, from that day, I just remembered something. Yeah. So, nice. So I we had never met before, and I like had known about Blake like loosely, but not really. And uh, I was like chilling backstage, about to like hop up there, and nitty gritty, the homie comes up. And he, we're like hanging out talking, and then Blake runs through the crowd doing some weird fucking Blake shit. I don't know, but like being super flagrant. And I'm like, who yeah. the fuck is that guy? And then he's like, yeah, that's my boy Blake. He's he's cool. He's like, <laughs> he's cool. He's like, he's fine, dude. I know I've got pictures of this, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna find the hard summer 2018 pictures, <laughs> and we're gonna uh, see what what's in here. Yeah. Um, and then we didn't meet you until like early last year. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, at a tournament, right? Or where I forget where. 
the first time we met. Forget exact. Mm. Yeah, can't pin it down. <laughs> Somewhere. Maybe we played but, golf together for the first time at Rustic. Is that the like we just were talking online and then kind of just? No, I remember how I met you. It was not. It, oh, me and him meeting is the best. <laughs> really? Oh, uh, do you guys even know this? So, so check oh, this out. I think I know. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so we all like live in the same area and go to this LA Fitness, uh, like on Cuenca Universal City. And um, well, not all of us, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the, three. All, 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 the cool, all the cool people. God but, uh, <laughs> damn it, Jake! Jake, God damn it! No, I, I didn't say. I just said we not know all what you did It's just a fact. It, so, was, you know? it was. It was. A, it was a, what we the, the most subtle flex. Yeah. So we're all at we're at the gym, whatever, Equals. right? I like barely know Blake. I don't even think Country Club adjacent had started, right? But I'm at the gym and he's and I'm like doing my thing. I see this dude, who is this dude? <laughs> and uh he was like he was wearing like some sort of golf related something and i was like getting a smoothie at the end and then tried like on some like small talk like said some some small dumb shit about golf or whatever and he was just like he was just like Bruh. just kind of brushed me off like he wasn't trying to hear the time of day i was like this motherfucker and i wasn't <laughs> trying to like brush you off i just like right. sometimes when i go to the gym I, I, I purposely do not like to chit chat at the gym because right. I'm there to fucking do my workout and get the fuck out. And some people, but this is pre CCA. That's, I figured, that's interesting because I figured if someone was trying to talk golf, it would like tickle your pickle a little bit and you want to <laughs> chat them up. <laughs> I do love talking about golf, but I honestly, no, like, but yeah, in, I don't in, like, in, I'm yeah, not a fr- I'm not like, I'm not a friendly dude at the gym per se because I'm like, I'd like to go there and get the fuck out because I'm yeah. already going to be there for three goddamn hours. That's yeah. interesting because this... anytime you're outside of the gym around like a like Bryson, all you want to do is talk about what to do in the gym. <laughs> when I'm outside the gym, that's a different story. I mean, that's his crush. You know, you got to give him a pass. Yeah, that's my dude, I, I, I came to the gym the other day and Griff was just sitting in the chair at the front of the gym. I was doing eBay stuff. <laughs> and, but, I was doing eBay stuff. And then he was like, yeah, I'm going to look at an apartment at 5 o'clock. It was like 2.30. <laughs> I'm like... How long? No, I went back home. Oh, okay. I, I didn't just hang out. There. I was like, "How long are you gonna be? No, here? no, no. How no. long were you there for? No, that would be weird. No, it'd be weird. That would, that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends. Is it like a nice space to sit? I mean, it's like a chair. Yeah. It's. I think it's a good chair. It's a, and a comfortable good, chair. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very. I've spent many times there doing eBay stuff. And you can but, see a lot of dudes come in. So. <laughs> yeah. So post all that, <laughs> right? So we had this awkward encounter in the gym, and then I think. Not long after, we were all invited to the same term or something, and I know Blake, so that I met all you guys, and then he's just like, hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. I'm like, actually, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking, I remember I called him out hard. He was just like, oh, man, like, I don't know. Like, and I wasn't trying to be rude. No, I, I know. I know, I know the I, vi- I know the vibes. It wasn't like a big deal, but it was just funny, because especially knowing you so well now, just that whole interaction was just like... It was just funny. It was yeah. probably something along the lines of you're talking to me. I'm like, oh, cool, man. Something like that. Yeah, it was a, like that. It, it was a fuck off. You know, it, it wasn't meant that way. But I'm I can yeah. see Griff just like very much just in like I'm a power lifter mode and yeah. like that. Like, and honestly, yeah. the next workout. No, it was at PGA memes is where is where the we we met he, met again again. And I remember when I in my head I was like I'm gonna confront him on this. Depending on his reaction, we're either going to be enemies or friends. <laughs> See, what <laughs> it is, friends. is, yeah, what it is, is it's an ADHD thing. So when some people with ADHD get focused or hyper focused and don't like to be like bothered sometimes. So it's like we're at the snack bar, dude. So I guess you were very <laughs> focused. But... <laughs> That's the most focused you'll find. Grim, yeah. I was focused on my smoothie. If he was on the bench, he'd be like, "Yeah, what's up, dude? Hey, how's it but going? Tell me ever, about your life." Like when you're doing something, and you caught a mid trough. I mean, yeah, you know, you can't yeah. blame for that. When you're in the middle, sometimes when I'm in the middle of something and I'm really focused, if something outside tries to have a conversation, I'm like not in that headspace. No, I'm the same yeah. way. And I might come across mm. as rude, but the intention was not to. Be I've rude. definitely done the same thing to so many people. Yeah. So dude, I, I don't hold it against you. And at I don't. All. And, and people story. will do it to me, and I don't take it personally because I'm like, you, you're probably busy on something, so whatever. I, I literally don't hear people. I'll yeah. be so in the zone that someone like someone will say something to me, and I just won't even hear it. Yeah, it's an they ADHD can't, they can't be talking to me. Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, "Hey, hey," and I'm like, "Oh, oh shit, what, what?" It's an ADHD thing. Yeah. We're like zoned in on something. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Anywho, that's how we, me and Griff met. And now when we see each other at the gym, we play it off like, yeah. "Who the fuck are you, dude?" <laughs> yeah. I saw you. At, I saw you at the gym one time. <laughs> yeah. We did a we did one set together. Yeah. Of uh, one set. Yeah, we did one set together. How many people were there? 
Just um, us. We rented it. Was this a bring-in show? Us. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. It was a private session. It was a we private a whole, sesh. All LA Fitness. And we did. Uh, we did um, extended cable uh, rear delts. Yeah. Oh, gotta get the rear delts. Gotta, gotta hit them, dude. Gotta hit the rear. I'll delts, say dude. always. With, if you do a workout with somebody else, you're gonna get a better workout. See, I disagree. I'm yourself. different. I don't. I'm. Different. I disagree. I like to work out alone because I. Got, I got my own routine. And yep. I follow it to a T. Yep. And mm. if someone's there, it'll just slow me down. Yep, exactly. That's true. He could do it in half the exactly, time. Exactly, dog. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> was there. see, there's that there fucking ADD. It's crazy. <laughs> I was like looking at Jake. Didn't even know it was here. Out of my peripheral. Yeah. It would have been funny if Jake wouldn't have said anything. That like my arm would have. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I would have finally seen it and been like, "Hey, buddy, I love you." Yeah. There we go. That's beautiful. Yeah. And wait. So then, how did Jake and Jake meet? Well, I was trying to figure I, it out. It yeah. must have just been at at the PGA memes. PGA memes. That year, two years ago, right? Yeah. 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 Well, is that not, the one? Did I, bl- did I blow one. you off as well? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, you're trying to be friends real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not, though. Jake's very cordial. <laughs> I would Jake, say Jake, Jake was like, guys, no. hello. Jake wanted something. <laughs> he wanted you to produce, uh, reproduce our song. Yeah, I knew this moment was going to happen. And, and you had my, my old game. roommate shooting photos for you, for you guys at that at that event, too. Oh, yeah, Alex. Alex Varsity. Where, where's he at now? Where's, is uh, he, he, he moved, moved out, oh, moved shit. in with this chick. Nice. Good but yeah, him. No, because I was pissed because he was like, yo, dude, I'm going to PJ Memes to shoot photos that I wasn't even playing yet. And I was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> He's going, and I, yeah. And then I finessed it, ended up playing with, like, Jesus and uh, yes. all those dudes. And we got second. I remember that. Yeah. Is those guys, you guys got cheated. To some old dudes. You, what did you guys shoot? 23? Yeah. I think it was like 20. Yeah, you guys under. definitely won. You guys shot like those 24 fuckers. under and lost? It was like yeah. 20 or 22. And they lo- wow. you lost to like a group of guys wearing MAGA hats. Nobody was in oh, no straight up. Like these guys like, cheated. I mean, this is the worst I've ever seen anyone cheat in a tournament. And that's coming from me. Yeah. The, I was like. <laughs> a cheater. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I saw your video I, yesterday, dude. Which oh. video? The, the fucking Australian. I don't do it. Oh, Dino cheats. I, I, I don't I, cheat. Dino does. I do, I I do that. I definitely. Dude. I play, I play from yeah. out of bounds. I don't care. Yeah. J- Jacob. <laughs> uh, or um, Yeah. Uh, Galladay. We were playing uh, a match in Palm Springs. You Miami. and him? Yeah, me versus oh, him. How, how seriously did he take that? He gave me 20 strokes, <laughs> rightfully so, because I'm not the best, and he's fucking he's smashes it. Very good. But it was like one of those situations where my ball was right outside the white stake and was like on the per- most perfect grass on a great lie, like fucking 15 feet from the green. Yeah. And he fucking binged me for a fucking stroke, and he was being a bitch. Was it a close match? <laughs> yeah. Well, like towards the end, I only got him by like a few. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was just trying to find anything out there. Yeah. yeah. See, that's lame. Were you guys playing for money? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, it? it's a tough call to make, but like, you know, when yeah. you're down and it is out of bounds, yeah. if you're playing for money, it's like, all right. I get it. But like with my, me and my level of, you know, golf and, and homies, like, we're like, whatever, dude, just fucking hit it. Exactly. If you get, if you get it, yeah. fucking hit it. And he's also supposed to be like the Jesus of golf. So aren't you supposed to be like out there helping people? Giving, yeah. yeah. Goodwill, yeah, dude. Yeah. 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 He is so good at golf. But he's a beast. He's so good at golf. <laughs> yeah. He is one of my, he's my favorite swing out of anyone we know. Yeah, it's so smooth and powerful. I'd love to recreate his swing, but I like I can't. Yeah, he he My pr- swing is neither of those things. <laughs> <laughs> it's neither smooth. We should or measure his testosterone levels cuz they're terrifying. You think but so? He's just like I bet you'd like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Griff wants to do it. Any- <laughs> Yeah, how do you, you measure? You need a semen Dude, sample? Like yeah, <laughs> sir, can I personally extract the semen from your nuts? I'm going to jerk them off with, to find out. Please? <laughs> we need to see your te- your le- your levels of tea. I feel like he's ready to, like, just trying to get some like, just He's just, data. like, fired up all the time. Yeah, he could probably whoop someone's ass. I really feel yeah. like he could. Yeah, I wouldn't want to like beat a, some ass, yeah. dude. I wouldn't want to fight. He's on some, like, Bruce Lee shit, like how Jack, like, his, like, level. Strength. He's not a big guy, but yeah. I feel like, like I've seen him not good on the grid once or twice at a long drive event, and, like, he, or one of them was, like, a bad call, and he just yeah, he lost his shit, and I was like, this dude's scary. Like it's like I want to I want to see him do some MMA. It's also the beard. Have you seen him without the beard? No, no. dude, he looks like a fucking like seventeen year old male model. Like no, like yo, yo, ask him to set, show you his license a picture. Seventeen, no. it's male unreal. Model. Like I'm trying to think of an actor, but like Liam, like Liam, uh, the- Travis Fimmel, like almost like like a Ryan Gosling fucking oh my pretty God. boy wow. vibes. Wow, good on him. Humble, not, humble not, to cover not it up. Quite, yeah. Not quite as handsome. But, yeah. But he's you know, covering a, up a, a good few, face. A few ticks yeah. under, but... Uh, 
Yeah. So why the beard is just for aesthetic, huh? It Brand. It usually you is. You yeah. can't you know? shave it. All beards are you can't usually. Shave it too. You can't show his face. I mean, everybody in their 30s experiments with beards. I bet, I bet, like, you could figure out some sort of a bet where if he lost, he shaved it. it the yeah. odds would have to be crazy, but. Yeah. If anyone could do it. You'd yeah, you probably have to put up like Jake, Jake versus Jake, straight up. <laughs> You'd have to give him strokes. Shave the That's beard. That's how he'll beat it. Shave the beard, or what, what, would, you, what would you do? You, would you beat him straight up? No. No, he shoots in the 60s. It took two of us to beat him. Yeah, Griff and I played two against one, I think, best ball, um, and we beat him. He was not a good But player. barely, but, right? Yeah, like one up. But it was on a par three course, right? So he was just like, but still, we don't make No, it. this was at Westchester. It was? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's par fours out there. We, play, he, he, we actually he played well, too. Yeah, he beat us on the par three course, though. Yeah. But wow. we, act, we played well. We had to play well. Yeah, he's good, dude. He'll go out and shoot like 65. He's incredibly he's talented. Yeah. And he's like new to golf relatively. No. Really? Yes. When he, remember when we had him on the podcast? He said like he didn't really start playing golf until like six or seven years ago. That's insane. That's not that new. I know, but his swing's so Super good, talented. dude. That's yeah, that fun. baseball background. When it comes to golf, that's very new. Yeah. yeah. He's so talented. You know? Yeah. But he's got, No part of his game is weak. Well, let's t check that testosterone and figure it out, you know? Yeah. See what's weak about him. <laughs> yeah, we need you to extract his semen. <laughs> Griff, please. We need to see if he's doping. Yeah, Yeah. does prolonged drive test for roids? No. Fuck no. No, dude, well, they wouldn't have a lead. Like, uh, dude, well, no. here's the thing. <laughs> better, better, Alex better, wants, better tee up. <laughs> Alex wants to get me on a cycle, but, you know, I'm going all, all natural, dude. I'm gonna no. Be, yeah, be your don't coach, do that shit. Your coach, Johnny Tremblin, is not going to allow <laughs> I mean, I'm going to disappoint my coach then, dude, because no. I, I need to. Well, I'm going to slip some I'll shit into your drink. Drinking. I'm gonna I'm gonna slip some um some droplets of some SARMs into your drink. You put SARMs in my drink? Sarms? Yeah, dude. Some Osterine. Oh, God. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to my dick? So I don't Nothing. really know a lot about okay. like, you know, DJing as a whole. <laughs> I'm pretty much like <laughs> that's a great not, way but to so I'm trying to think of like field. what is a good question to ask. You know, what Here, got you into what got you into uh, <laughs> being a musician and a producer? How did all that start? Oh, um, hey, great question. <laughs> He's like, here, take it for twenty minutes. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I actually started DJing in eighth grade. Damn. Um, so you I, were crushing middle school parties. Talent show or what? I was more like, I was more like in the bedroom, like practicing and shit. Scratching. Yeah, because I started like deep into hip hop and got into like scratching and battle DJing and, and doing rap stuff. So in high school, I was kind of just like in the bedroom, a couple like house parties and friends parties. Then when I went to college in Boston, I um, I started Northeastern and then transferred to Emerson College, who had like the number one college Princeton Review rated like station in the country. Yeah. So I transferred there and got on the station right away. It was like super competitive, and like within a year, I was the. How did you get on right away? Because I'm nice with it. It just <laughs> no, basically like it's a small like Emerson College is like a performing arts like school. Like a lot of people are super talented to go there, but it was like the hip hop show only had like basically so five days a week, two two you know people per show. Okay. So people would submit you know auditions with like a mix and like a voice thing. And I was already like <clears throat> making mixtapes and like doing stuff like that. You had the so, backlog. So I came in with like a super fire, like produced fucking mixtape intro with me scratching and me talking. And that basically got me on right away. So uh, were you uh were you JCO from the from the jump or did you um, what I was, was actually the first, the, <laughs> the, first, oh. <laughs> the first name was DJ Threat. DJ oh, Threat. Dude, because I, I used to write graffiti. So at a liberal graffiti. art school. Is that a threat? No, that's a promise. <laughs> I, I, I moved to JCO like um basically right in college. Because that's your okay. initials, right? Yeah. So straight from DJ Threat to JCO, or was there a middle ground there? No middle ground. Yeah. Nice, dude. Decisive. Yeah. But basically I was on the college in Boston on the college. On the radio in Boston in, in school and like running this radio show. And we'd have big guests like Wu Tang, like all the big rappers would come really? through. And I would be talking to the record labels, coordinating interviews, and then there'd be concerts that I'd be like the house DJ. So I got really dialed into the Boston and just like just the hip hop scene. And so, dude, I, that's crazy yeah. to do in college. Yeah. And then after I graduated college, I was working for this website, undergroundhiphop.com, which was like one of the biggest like vinyl distributors. I remember across, underground across, hip -hop. across the world. And I was like, getting paid to do like terrible shit like packing orders but i was also getting paid to like make like custom mixtapes 
and we're sitting there packing orders to like fucking Poland and like all over the world. And like part of buying shit there is you get a promo tape. So I'd be like sneaking in JCO. Make sure oh, okay. It's going to Tanzania. Yeah, yeah. This is going to, you know, Japan. So it was cool just getting going like that. Then I was touring with rappers for Do you ever a see that come full circle? Like anybody bring up like, hey, I got this promo tape. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. But I was oh. like, yeah, touring with rappers. And then I uh, moved to New York City out of Boston after like just DJing clubs and whatnot. And I was just grinding in the clubs in New York. DJing, doing some rap stuff with various rappers. And then, um, you know, I don't want to list like all the rappers. This It's just too much. But yeah. sh- long story short, I moved from New York back to L.A. and started DJing in, on, in clubs and getting immersed in this scene. And then I went out and auditioned to be on a, a TV show on VH1. Okay, which called, one? Called Master of the Mix. I don't okay. know if you recall it. I, I wish I did. It's, really, it's all good. But like while so, VH1 so, was like top yeah, of the It was game. the shit. So yeah. it was on BET for two seasons. And then it got picked up by VH1. And I was like, oh, this is a little more attractive. And then like grand prize is a quarter million dollars. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm going out for it. Yeah. And like did all these crazy auditions. It took like forever. Then I ended up getting on the show. And it was 10 episodes, national television. Um, Started with 20 DJs, like Top Chef, Chop Style. Like every episode is like. The hip hop edition, the EDM edition, the the remix edition, the team shit, and I ended up winning the whole show. Wow, <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that, dude. Yeah. I want to see. He's such a humble I, guy. He didn't flex that at all. I need to see episodes. Yeah. I need. I to got see... him. I got him. Ah! But but like I won a quarter million dollars, and I was like, what the fuck? You know, like this is yeah. It changed my life. And did you start a charity so you didn't get taxed on it, or uh, <laughs> I started a charity, the Jake Osher uh, charity. <laughs> 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 no, but but it was actually kind of tight because. Uh, Smirnoff was the the sponsor of the show, so what I won was a year contract to be their official DJ. So I got like sixty two five every three months, so it was like a job. Yeah. So I could write off shit and like sixty two know. five. What's yeah. that? Think about like it. how much you get paid. Yes. Oh. Two thousand five hundred every month. Every three. Every, As their house. That's like every, what their house. Mo- every three DJ. months. Yeah. No, because I won a quarter mil, so they broke it up. Oh, okay. So you had to, in a sense, kind of work for it, where it's just like you're their house yeah, DJ. Yeah. So, so, so over, over the course of that year, I did like, sorry, maybe ten events, but we were doing like cool shit. It was like, like spot. I wish I was fucking on it then, but like, I was doing these Spotify house party tour, where like Spotify would rent out a house and it'd be like me and like Estelle or like, you know, Khalees or like, yeah. What? And we like throw a house party to invite all these people. It's a free party. Damn. Uh, You're saying to like be on it to be like, let me make music with these people. No, but just like if I like realize how valuable Spotify is now now, back then, like I could be fucking, Yeah, that shit would have helped a lot. But how could you predict? Yeah, exactly. You can't. But whatever, it still changed my life. And like, that's Mm -hmm. when I shifted from like, all right, I was like already like toured with rappers, won big battles, was DJing, you know, clubs across the country and across the world. But it was just like kind of bottle service club shit where it's just like you get the job done, you get money, but it's not like people aren't all coming to see you like it's yeah, a show. It's right. not it's a just hard gig. Yeah. yeah, it was great to make some money, but I was like, I want to play fucking festivals, bro. Like yeah. that looks sick. And like you have to be an artist and make your own music for that. So winning all that money allowed me to like start turning down like just the whatever to get by gigs and be way more picky and just focus on producing. And over a course of a few years, I just, you know, spent all my time on making music and it mm-hmm. took a while to get you know respected and accepted in that community but like you know slowly but surely it happened and, and now i've been like you know producing records and djing across the world for like over a decade so it's yeah it's i'm fucking, fucking tight. bricked up huh. right now let's go <laughs> yeah, dog. isn't that such a nice coming I, of I age didn't, story that's i i didn't know i didn't know that at all and and to, to think i brushed you off in the gym i was thinking the same thing <laughs> <laughs> like does he know Jesus Christ, Griff. <laughs> oh, man. Does he know that I won VH1 Scratch Off? Yeah, show? if he just said that in that moment, I'd be like, I, I fuck with it. Did you ever, I don't know if this is a thing or not, but did anybody ever look at you as like, oh, this is the kid who won a game show? Well, and- th- exactly. Like, that was actually a big thing with my old management that we were dealing with. Because after I won the game show, I was becoming an artist, like in the artsy art world. Like, that, you don't want to be known by that. You want to yeah. be known by your music. Yeah, look yeah. at Harry Styles. So, like, did. literally, like, once I made the shift from, like, you know, club DJ, fucking flashy, that shit, 
and like you're gonna be a real artist now like my managers are like we're not even putting that in your fucking EBK. yeah like, what i want a goddamn tv show and like but they're just like dude trust me you know and uh you know it it makes sense. Yeah, it, it right probably it didn't probably, stop Harry Styles. It yeah. probably paid off yeah. in the end. Because like as sick as that is, like I've done a, a lot of other dope shit that in the more artist world that would impress people to where we had enough where we didn't have to say that. Right. But it's a right, nice exactly. it's a nice little sprinkle. Yeah. When people are like, oh yeah, oh by the way, by you the know, way. right? I can yeah. see that going yeah. both ways, yeah. but it's pretty you know? wild. Yeah. Like I, it still doesn't feel real that that happened. Like well, the other day, I was, Theo. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying the other day I was golfing. Um, at Debell, nightmare. Damn, name course. drop. Nice dude. flex. <laughs> wow, way to flex. Very exclusive Debell. Yeah. Wow. Anyways, but I was with the, I was with the homie, the and, and he had, he didn't know that, and we we're like waiting for some group on the next hole, and they were just like watching it on the phone, and I was just like watching it back. I'm just like, it's fucking weird. It's like almost out of body. Yeah. To think. Is it on YouTube? Can people go and see it now? Yeah, you can see like small clips, like not the clear shit, but there's like the finale. You could see. Yeah. You search like Master of the Mix, JCO winner. We hit, um, we've had a couple buddies that uh, Theo Vaughn did Road Rules, mm -hmm. and it took him, he said, 10 years to wipe that off so people didn't see him as that guy. He said it yeah. held him back. And then a homie of ours who's a long drive guy, and he's like a, he's also a model, he's jacked, did a one of these dating shows where he won. Oh, you're talking about Bobby Ray? Yeah. And yeah. what was the show? I forget. At the very end, it was down to him and this one girl, and... It's either he chooses her or he takes a fucking bowling ball and he drops it through glass and he fucking drops it. And it was just like a complete curveball for the show. What, for... Is, he, is there money in there? Yeah. So, yeah, like, if so you he's like, fuck win, that. I'm taking it. If you win, you can choose to like, because it's a dating show, right? So right. if you like the girl at the end enough, you can share the money and then start a relationship and a life together. Yeah. Or so you like just fuck, drop. Boy, fuck yeah. boy island, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like that's basically what the show. Yeah. I, I or you drop a bowling ball through glass. You're like, I'm fucking taking the cash, and that's what he did. How yeah. much? How much money was it? A quarter million. I think it was a little less than that, but nah. Yeah, he's I not getting that. Yeah, he's not getting that. Type of thing. <laughs> I would. Uh, I think it was like a hundred k or something. I, would I think probably, they dated afterwards anyway. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I, I think they probably, dated afterwards anyway. I feel like they can try to like put you in sort of like a contract <clears throat> where you can't, but I feel like you get you, no, you sneak around. He's like, you I'll can still take the money. You get the money, yeah. cool. and then you yeah. take her to Chili's afterwards, and it's yeah. all good. Boom. Or Applebee's. <laughs> I like. Applebee, yeah. I'm a big. They're ribs, dude. Fuck off. Cheesecake Factory, dude. Ooh, she's worth. She, it. I mean, cheesecake is. I mean, she's got to be real special. Yeah. Cheesecake Factory, dude. So yeah, he did that, and he's like kind of known for that. And people are like, "Oh, you're the dude that fucking dropped the ball." And he's like, "Man, they edited it to make it look like I thought about it." And he's like, "No, I fucking dropped that bowling ball so fast." Yeah, the yeah. tense music with like <laughs> cut, twenty cutaways, literally. Was like literally one second. Yeah, he's, like, no, he's like, "No, I dropped the ball." Yeah. <laughs> I dropped. We can probably find it. Well, somewhere. dude, it's been a tough transition for Griff as well after he um, won Holy Moly. Yeah. So, <laughs> poor uh, guy. Did he? <laughs> No, dude, I got cucked. I got cucked. Did you even make it? I got no. I got cast to be on the show, and then out of nowhere, I got an email being like, "Sorry, we don't want you." Apparently, they said they're going to go in another direction. Yeah, literally. Apparently, apparently direction. some old tweets, and I combed through some old tweets. I've never said anything like really bad. I don't think I don't think they're scouring tweets. But, like but that wait, what's no? What's, they're owned by Disney. Huh. They are. They are. they are. I had someone that worked there tell me. What's so What's so funny? Yeah, like this guy looks fucking. What's racist. so funny the about this? <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> is that Mark got cast? Yeah, in the in the same season that Griff was supposed yep. to be cast. I know Mark it was tender. Yeah, <laughs> I wish he did better on that. I, I was really like, I want I was Mark to win. So there for it, dude. Yeah. He said it was the most miserable time. Yeah, they didn't they pay did. him. It was miserable. He had to go like three. That's in the what these shows are like. Like the show I was on. Like if you didn't win, you got nothing. Right, it's trash. Like the dudes who got second and third place, they're so salty. Was like, there? But at least it's yeah. exposure for the exact thing you want to be doing. Right. Uh, opposed to like mark i mean just playing mini golf was uh was i mean he, and then br he's hurting his neck what on the on the thing the windmill smack honestly him. that's a that, and you signed something like, that's what like, i'd be scared about i yeah. got, i low-key applied yeah <laughs> for the for the new one yeah but, uh, uh -oh. they, they didn't hit me back fucking okay. idiots. they reached back out to me to do the next season and i said no i'd say the wow. best life, life advice i can give you currently in this just moment don't is do don't it. ever do that show i'm just I worried about getting down. injured that, and that's fair. As a professional golfer, you should be worried. I just want to see if, like, <laughs> any type of competition show, maybe I just win every one I try. I know, right? Wouldn't like, that be what wild? If, dude? 
Another quarter million for the boy. Maybe I'll try something else before I jump there. We'll yeah. See. Unless you win one of these shows, which you did, and our friend Tanner Beard did. Unless you win the show, it's trash. And the odds is like, don't even, don't even fucking do it. Did don't you even. get? Did you get a stipend for being on the reality show? No, nah, they basically paid. They didn't pay. They didn't pay us money. No. That's they crazy. basically put us up and fed us the whole time. That's crazy. But there was no like. Maybe there was like a small per diem, but it was it wasn't shit. Do they give you any resources as an artist? Uh, I mean, each thing they would give us like each day would be like this is the challenge, and then there'd be like a certain amount of like uh, studio time where we could like work on our shit, and they'd be like cut it off at certain times so everyone had the exact amount of time to like right. prepare for it. It was pretty nerve wracking. Like I was so zoned the fuck in, I was fucking like meditating, going on jogs. I went to this like. Because it was filmed in Miami, I went to the Russian Turkish baths before the finale, yeah. oh, and wow. I was sitting in the gem room with like all the wild, like you know, positive stones and like just like zoning the fuck. Were out. they yeah, hitting you that. with the palm leaves, like slapping you, beating you off? Um, I opted out of that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I want to do that. You want to get beat off by a Russian man My named buddies, Vlad? So they were in Chicago, and that happened. And one of their buddies had. One of them beat him with the leaves, and his towel drops off, and he was hard. And they all just died laughing. Like, what? <laughs> I, be like, I, I guess that's pretty funny. That's funny. If you're in there with your buddy and you don't expect that, that's the funniest, like, ex just exposing your friend. Like, oh, we know what you're into now. Okay. You want to beat some boys with leaves. You, Yeah. You like ah. to beat off. I mean, shit goes down in those baths. <laughs> not, the, not the ones I go to, but... Uh, okay, <laughs> our sauna. I, I, I'm just saying historically, there's like weird. I don't know bathhouse dude. rituals. Uh, our sauna is the craziest in the whole city, because we have these crazy fucking Russians that come in. They're psychotic, and they they come in. Oh, I I know the one you know, guy. There's you know, the one guy, Jan. His name is Jan. The Jack dude. Yeah, who makes and, the weird noises the whole time. Yeah. Uh, oh no, that dude. Okay, he's the, uh, that dude. That's another Russian. They put a cold towel over this. The, like the temp gauge on top, and yeah. it tricks it into thinking it's way colder. They get it to two. I'm not kidding you. I saw two thirty one day, and it's that's not healthy. But they come in and they're crazy, and they will unsolicited start talking about Putin. It's like a Seinfeld character, and it's so fucking funny. Your face is burning. They're talking about how great Putin is. It's it's crazy. Our son is fucking <laughs> insane. Wow, I I I, I, Young, I saw the come guy in come in and put the towel on it the other day, but I was at the end of my session, so I didn't see how hot it yeah, got. But I'm into it sometimes though. Sense. Like I'm trying to burn out. Yeah, you know I mean, Literally. all you need is five minutes in there, and you're good. No thanks. Yeah, these guys come in, they go. You know, these people think Vladimir Zelensky. I'm like, I didn't. I didn't. Where does this? I, I'm just trying to chill, dude. Yeah, I'm headphones in. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm headphones in. I do <laughs> not, not trying to hear no small do, talk in the I sauna. I do not want to talk to anyone in the sauna. Even, the, the other day was fine because like I never talked. And Griff was in the sauna and we were hanging out. But I don't want to talk to anyone in the sauna. Yeah. I don't want to talk about Russian politics. I have, yeah, I'm trying to focus on breathing. I have <laughs> nothing <laughs> to say to anybody, dude. I don't care about your opinions. I don't know you. I don't care about you. I'm trying to get Jake to our gym, dude, because his gym does not have a sauna. That sucks. That is true. Most of them don't. That sucks. That's really yeah. shitty. Just has steam room, which we, I don't even know is good for you. It's I, not. We don't have any study. I haven't. I haven't seen any studies. Uh, there's uh, a shitload of studies. But on I love stuff. it though. It makes me feel good. After. I can tell you why the steam room's <laughs> not good for you, or at least most of the time, because you don't know where what their water source is. If you're gonna be breathing in the water from a steam room, you literally want it to be like the most purified, distilled, clean yeah, yeah. bacteria. And they're not doing water. that. Evian, they're not doing yeah. that. Evian only. I, maybe my gym does it a little bit. I mean, it might be filtered, but it, the know. likelihood of that is yeah. probably not that. Probably high. zero, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Ultimately, sauna is way better for you. Yeah. yeah you got. I just like. I want to see how much I'm sweating. Exactly. It's a fucking myth when you're in the fucking steam. You're like, <laughs> you're is this steam? steam? Is the sweat? Who knows? Yeah. It's both. It, it's both. I went so hard in there yesterday that when I got out, I was like really just tired and ready to take a nap, and then suddenly, hey. You got to eat these hot wings and be fun <laughs> oh, that, for fucking 25,000 people. I'm like, God damn it. I'm Well, that's so why you do a cold shower right after sauna. I do do that sometimes. Those are solid, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know what but I But I heard uh, that it's actually not good to do a cold plunge or cold shower right after working out. Yes, because you uh, limit the growth of your muscles from right. afterwards. You want to do it at four hours after. Interesting. Yeah. If you can. Hmm. You know what I want to do hmm. four hours after? 
I want to use the lag shot. Oh my oh, goodness. Wow. Oh my sponsor you... of today's episode of Country Club Adjacent featuring JCO, no other than kidding me. The lag shot. Can I just lag say shot. your swing was so good with it the other day. And after I noticed you slowed down a little bit in your tempo and you start hitting more fairways. Dude, I'm I will honestly say that this device in of itself, because it allows you to hit the ball. You can track your results as you're using the club. That's what I love about the lag shot, and that's why I'm going to be using it both for my training for my long drive this year and also for my game playing because if you're not lagging, you're not flagging. <laughs> <laughs> also, stop. I know you're Love struggling. What's cool about lag shot as well is it's not just for <laughs> one type of like, player. Oh, don't leave out the L. <laughs> don't leave the L out. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. You guys. Okay. Uh, Do you think this could help my game? I, you know I what? know it will. If you're either 100%. a junior, a senior, a regular, a normal, a something, or another, if you're they have a club for you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, if if you are a parent, you want to get your kid into the game, maybe your kid's just out there trying to just hit the ball as hard as he can, which is great. But with he can still try to do that. But with the lag shot, it will give like automatic feedback of like, hey, that's not the real way to do it. You know, literally. So literally you can uh, make your kids more chill in life by getting them the lag shot. And also one thing, uh, because they have so many different clubs available you can you can use your your swing for each club because you know with with a driver I have a very flat swing and you know I use that same swing with this but for my seven iron which the lag shot has it's a more upright swing because you want to hit down on the ball and then same with the wedges so it's like you can you can imitate each swing with the lag shot to modify your tempo to be just right. Yep. So that your game is tight. And here's one thing I love about it the most. If there's anything you can see in amateurs, it's either your upper body's firing too fast or your lower body. But rarely is it in sequence altogether because that's really hard to do. Yeah. You start training with this thing and it teaches your body to move as one unit. It, you have to. That's what and I it, need. Yeah. And it that's naturally teaches that. And next thing you know, like your whole body is moving as one unit. And it's like, oh, okay. All I needed was was this tool. Okay. Well yep. that's that's way too easy. And the other the other thing that I love about it is that it is weighted. Feel this. So when you're warming up, this will oh, absolutely nice. loosen your muscles, get you ready to go so that in your round, uh <laughs> you're knocking it down. I like it. It's uh, yeah, uh, this thing is it looks pretty. It's a solid weight, dude. Yeah. That's a solid one. Yeah, Give big, so big fan of the lag shot. Uh, thank you so much, uh, I'm lag shot. The for so, uh, thinking GCO, of us. like, we obviously met, I, Griffin, I met right. you more through golf, right? right? But at the gym. Uh, yeah. Brush them off at the gym. <laughs> uh, so, what is kind of like your Whatever, dude, mindset dude. on like, where what your place is within the within the golf world you know because obviously yeah. you've been starting to put out more <clears throat> golf content yeah and uh you know i know you've like dj'd at some great golf i saw you yeah. like you and schoolboy q during the top golf yeah, thing. The pga 2k global launch party yeah yeah sick. we were supposed to be there yeah but then we got cucked damn yeah <laughs> <laughs> now so yeah. basically you know about waiting for that live 2k yeah, about a year ago <laughs> almost to the date like i was just kind of like thinking about my brand and like me as an artist and like my brand previously, because I mm. came up doing all this battle stuff and hip hop stuff, and made, I was making kind of like more aggressive music. My brand was just kind of a little too like tough guy, cool guy, you know. So my one of my older managers was like, "Yo, like Jake the person is like a fun loving, enjoyable guy. Like that anyone who meets you and actually gets to know you is like, oh, like I like this guy a lot." He's like, "So let's just like push that." And he's like, "He's like, what do you love?" I was like, "I fucking love playing golf and making music." He's like. Let's fucking start pushing golf shit. And I just started kind of leaking it out and just like through the various people I knew, like get invited to various tournaments and this and that and being able to like meet guys like you and like people like, well, basically really the catalyst was like when I, I got invited to memes, right? Cause I was playing the, uh, one of the artists to play the party tour, which is like the first golf slash music festival right? through, through Jesus of golf, Jacob. So he invited me there through there. I met all these other people and then um, I was going to Colorado actually to play Red Rocks with Big Gigantic, and I saw the homie Buttsy was like uh, 
posted some shit about Colorado Golf Blog, this and that. Right. And so like, then you went out there and, and I Lee. and I had no idea who Lee was. I was like, yo, I'm going to play Red Rocks. Like, I love the golf. I was like, what's up with this dude? But he was like, you two are the same people. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he's like, and he he connected me, and I went out and just randomly like drove all the fucking way out to Colorado Springs to meet up with Lee, like not knowing shit. And, and now we, and we've been like best friends ever. Fucking Lee's the fucking best. Love he's the, Lee. One of the greatest yeah. human beings alive. Yeah. So you know, through Lee, and then I get Lee becomes like one of my main you know homies and like kind of mentors and like introduced me and showing me around like the golf industry. And then he's like, "Fucking come to waste management, dude." I'm like, you know, obviously partying with Lee is fucking no joke. I'm like, let's fucking send it. <laughs> it is no <laughs> joke. Yeah. So then we're all staying in the same house and like I meet. Uh, you know Matt Cardis there, and um, a bunch of ton of other you know golf golf people, and um, uh, you know Cardis specifically, like we really kicked it off, and then you know we met in March, you know of last year or February, and we've hit like eight different states and then all this wild shit, but so you know long story longer, um, <laughs> nah. so basically in terms of me and golf, like basically what I'm trying to do now is like create a world where you know music. And golf like really meet each other. They you coexist. Know? We like, need coexist. It's just like because like this new generation of golfers, like you guys, me, like all the people we're friends with, like we like to fucking party and we like to golf. And like, how do we make that the most fun? So I'm actually working on something for this year um, that I don't want to say too much about, but I'm working on like a big, like you know, twenty to thirty city type tour Woo! that's gonna involve you know shows, you know, golf shit, competition, like. Mm -hmm just fun like every city pull up and have a whole day of events touching on you know food art culture golf music and just like have like you know mini you know just a whole day of events in each city we pull up to and just trying to make like you know an experience out right of it. you know not just like you're not just golfing you're not just partying like just have more experiential shit that involves all the things that i love you know yeah it's interesting like what does that look like as a product you know as far as like really combining music and golf yeah you know like comedy and golf is uh <laughs> what's up Griff? as he was explaining his tour i just saw the gears grinding in your head it's like this is a business like oh <laughs> how can he monetize and i want equity and like i just saw the gears grinding in the well, zone and i love it well i mean <laughs> the, i mean the, the whole idea of this concept is to you know tap into to every, hey, welcome to the office what are we doing yeah, here you know? yeah we <laughs> handle business we're fucking jews you know we make sure <laughs> i wasn't gonna say it um but but yeah i mean part of a main part of the thing is doing this in different cities and each city, you know, tapping into like all my different friends and different mm -hmm. golf industry people to help create these experiences and just do something fucking dope and unique in any fucking city we go to, mm -hmm. you know? That's so sick. And, and then on top of that, you've got all this going on. You and your brother. Oh yeah. I love the story you told about your brother. <laughs> he was, uh, he was like a, you told, he was like a head chef at, uh, Nobu in Moscow, got yeah. furloughed and then was like, fuck it. I'm finally going to open my own restaurant and you guys yeah. show up award winning, not just like, Hey, we're going to make some interesting or good pizza. You show up and absolutely blow everyone out of the water with this fucking pizza. These flavors. It's award winning. It, it's he, he had told me and I had this pizza and I'm like, you've had gourmet pizza. You've had nice pizza, fancy pizza. We've all had that, but no, you can taste. Oh, this dude was like a Michelin three-star Michelin level uh, chef taking that experience putting it into a fucking pizza whoa there buddy yeah best pizza i've ever had yeah and it's best, in los angeles <laughs> best pizza i've yeah. ever had by a lot it's different it's not normal yeah. and as someone that has a gluten intolerance pizza is legitimately the number one thing that makes me shit it my pants it destroys us we will shit up my stomach we'll shit our pants it's so it's so bad and and when we went to gorilla pies that day which is uh what we're talking about right now gorilla pies uh, where is it in uh, Valley Village? Yeah, it's Valley Village, like yeah. right near Studio City, North Hollywood area. Yeah, and when we went there, not only was it absolutely phenomenal, it was it didn't hurt my tummy. Yeah, it's Daddy good. didn't have yeah. a tummy ache because he does a special blend on his, doing on his European dough. European gluten, and it's like a heavy, yeah. it's a heavy like sourdough. Yeah, sourdough. Like blend That's the key. And sourdough. I bet you can eat sourdough. Yeah. Oh. Sourdough doesn't fuck you up as much. Yeah, hundred yeah. oh. percent. 
Oh, yeah. He, that's the shit he knows. Well, and people I'm, aren't doing that. I could have told you that. It, well, there. Well, and I'm a big sourdough guy. Yeah, there's. I'm a big kind of energy sourdough, uh, crystal type energy artist. Energy sourdough <laughs> crystal type fella. No, it's it's like there's there's a certain chemical that happens in like the enriched wheat here in the United it's States. It's garbage. Yeah, and that sometimes people mistake that reaction right. in your gut to what happens to people that are gluten intolerant. And I didn't have that with uh, with the Gorilla Pies pie. That's huge. It's because all the ingredients are crazy high quality. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? Your brother is got this cushy job, and then, like, what happens? He's he's there in Moscow. No, so he was the head chef at Nobu. Um, he started in L.A. Then they offered. He was just like the guy in the back fucking order ordering food like he wasn't even a chef then started from the but bottom. they but they let him like cook he was already like a chef but like not officially but yeah. he loved restaurants and they would let him cook the staff meals right so he would fucking kill it for the whole staff and then one day he'd be like hey you know stay later like work on like the line make the cod for tonight or like make this or that at nobu and he was just killing it and then one day they just came to him like yo would you want to potentially move to moscow and be the head chef and like we'll pay for everything. Like you get paid way more than you're making now, plus all expenses. And he was just like, "Yep." He's just like, "Fuck it," and That's... just like sent it to Russia for two years. How what was his life like there? That's got to be fucking insane. Probably fucking. Does he speak <laughs> Russian at all? <laughs> no, he learned like a little bit of Russian just so he could like yell at people in the kitchen. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. But he said it was wild. Like during that time, it was like a lot of the like, you know, Trump like collusion vibes going on and like all these like oh, Ru yeah. russian oligarchs oligarch and yeah. gangsters would come in there and they'd be like you know not that many people can afford to eat there but like the people that can like they'll come and they'll be like have a dinner and then there's just like they have a bar area where there's just like two dudes who've, who've looked like they've murdered like a hundred russian thugs yeah, yeah. that's kind of scary though if you fuck up yeah. a meal for those yeah. guys that's a little scary but yeah like, so so he was there he moved back um to la to get like a crazy surgery on his ankle he was off his feet for a long time which fucking sucked yeah but uh then his next job was um he was the head chef at mama shelter in hollywood which is like his dope bar he was yeah. like running, yeah. running the rooftop the kitchen like he got hired like two months before the pandemic like killed it there uh. then the pandemic furloughed him and like everything was closed you know and he lives two blocks away from me and growing up every sunday was like pizza night with the family right Love it. And uh, he was like, fuck it. I'm going to just start making pizza. And he was like making his own dough, his own sauce. I live two blocks away. Couldn't eat anywhere else. I'm just like, fuck yeah. I'm pulling up every Sunday for pizza. <laughs> <Hell> <laughs> you know, yeah. Just get baked and eat mad pizza. Oh. Um, and then, you know, he started really getting his recipe right. And he was like, you know, like all I'm seeing all these like pop up restaurant ideas, people selling shit out of the back of their car type stuff for food because everything's closed. He's like, let's do one. And we were just sitting there. He's making pizza. We're talking about like like what should we call it and we we're like i don't know like this is kind of like a guerrilla movement like you know g-u-e like an underground movement i'm like yeah so i'm with gorilla we're thinking i was like but yo gorilla the animal is just like way more animated we can make a crazy logo yeah i was you like gorilla pies boom. characterize it we launch we launch a pop-up at his apartment just word of mouth starts catching heat and um my dad is just a very resourceful old old jew as nice. you can imagine. Go on. Yeah. And he uh, <laughs> <laughs> continue. Jake's taking me. And uh, he found uh, a restaurant that was going out of business because um, sure, of the sure. pandemic. Great, great time to scoop in, right? So basically, <laughs> we bought out an old kosher pizzeria that's in this plaza. That's like has like a, a kosher supermarket, like a kosher bakery, a lot of like Jewish kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it was a kosher pizzeria, which we hundred percent are not. Um, it's but, funny the, the, the but, but we're also Jews, so we're like, you know, well, yeah, we, you guys, we you still got a Reuben pie. Yeah, Our, you guys got a Reuben pie, right? Yeah. Or, what do you call it though? The rabbi. Yeah, yeah. 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 But the rabbi. Do was it <laughs> nice. an Orthodox neighborhood that we're in? No, yeah. there's a, there's a bunch. Or yeah, is it but bunch it's not there. like it's not like it's uh, not exclusive. Uh, yeah. Like Hall, like. La Cienega Robinson. It's not it's that. Robinson. It, it, it but there is, are yeah. a lot of Orthodox. Yeah. yeah. And but do they secretly sneak in and eat? No, dude. Pizza? It's insane. Like they come in, like literally to this day, a few times a week, they'll come in and be like, is it kosher? You know, like the straight <laughs> oh. Israeli shit. Yeah. And my brother's like, no. We actually have a sign. Can you offer or the whole kitchen no. has to be kosher? No, we could make something that's technically not kosher, but we're not gonna like separate a station. So we cut a piece of cheese and a piece of meat right. a different knife. Like we, right. that's just too We much. ain't got time for that. Yeah, but we can make something that doesn't have meat 
you know, and, right. I mean, obviously, but people, it depends on your level. But sometimes we'll find some like Orthodox dude sneaking in on the low and be like, let me get that. Back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is nice. that going on? <laughs> nice. It, 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 it Rabbi just eating in the fucking yeah. like, he's eating in the kitchen yeah. secretly. Yeah. So basically, but basically, we bought this place for a third of the asking price. Like the main thing was like, it had this, you know, this huge pizza oven. It was basically like, it's not the biggest place because we didn't know if it would work or not. So we had to, you know, hedge our bet. Right. And uh, we opened it up and we've been open a year and a half and just been like getting insane press. Like, eat Dude, her. you guys won an yeah. award. <laughs> We're in like best award spots winning. in L.A. Well, Are yeah. you thinking of another location already? I am thinking of that. Um, that's my main thought, to be honest. Because what, like what the current The current one is... Um, you know, it's kind of tucked away in the cut in the valley. Like, I want to, like, something I wanna see in a popping area, like Fairfax around here, Santa Monica, just something that has, like, more of an energy and a lot vibe of to. foot traffic and stuff. Cause Are you the, got- the vision I have for it for, like, the next one is, like, like a bigger kind of, like, a sports bar with, like, that was well, something that has a sports bar, right? Like, a full bar, TVs for games, but, like, tons of seating, big outdoor patio with various, like, sport games. We and, talked like, about this right. at the gym Like, little shit, time. yeah. But it's just, like, what we've done with our, our concept so far is out of control. Like, within it, the amount of press within a year and a half. Like, we just filmed um, last week for the CBS morning show, like, national. Like, Damn. Gail, Gail King type shit. <laughs> so it's, like... The buzz is crazy. We just like it's running a restaurant is so hard, dude. It's yeah, so like yeah. employees, like just keeping employees essentially is like having employees that really can get the job done because making our food is so specific and you need to care about right. it. It's and hard. a pizza spot, like you know, is known as like the high school employee that like you know doesn't really give a shit. Yeah, yeah. but well, like to find people yeah. for a spot like this yeah. that like needs it's, to. Yeah, because you know? ours is like artisan, like more like high tier. We're not hiring right. like high school kids. And I mean, we would if you're killing it. Yeah, we're not a- we're not ageist over over yeah. gorilla pots. But, well, uh, um, what started with you know just one of the better offerings we've we've gotten on this show so could potentially end in us having a simulator place co-owned with the uh, with the pizza shop. Let's fucking get uh, it. Uh, that would be crazy. But you yeah, know this is that's beautiful. uh it's about all the time a podcast should be. I think the only way to end this episode is listening to this intro song again. Let's yeah, go. Couldn't have said it any better. Let's JCL, thank you go. for joining us on this episode of NPR adjacent. Where, where can everybody follow you? Um, on Instagram at JCO, uh, that's J A Y C E E O H. That's that radio voice, I'm following. baby. I'm following. On on everything, hit me up. Uh, check out my music. I got tons of stuff, tons of mixes. Um, and I can't say the name of the tour yet, but we're gonna be coming your way soon this year, and it's gonna be crazy. Yes, I'll see you at the is. gym. <laughs> yeah, I won't say hi. Same. <laughs> <laughs> This is it. All that ball drop. Come on. Listen for the swings. Listen for the swings. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hear the golf swing. Catch these hands, yep. bro. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> oh, Absolutely so incredible. Good. So good. That's so good. <laughs>